So that's what we're going to work towards. That's what we're going to do. Luckily, this is you know, very simple to implement thanks to the DLib library. Huge thanks to Davis King for implementing DLib. It just makes our lives so much easier when performing facial landmark detection. So I'm gonna open up the project directory structure here. We have this facial landmarks.py script. This is the script responsible for actually performing facial landmark detection. And then you have this .dat file. This is your trained facial landmark detector. Davis King has already trained this model for you. I get asked all the time, like, hey, what is this model? Like, I don't understand how to open it. Like, PyCharm doesn't want to open it. This is not a plain text file. This is a trained model file. It's the serialized representation of the facial landmark model. You're not supposed to edit it. You're not supposed to open it up in an editor. You know, it's just a binary file residing on disk. And DLib understands how to load this model and then perform facial landmark detection. Now, if you wanted to create and train your own shape predictor, that's possible. And in fact, we cover that here on the PyMage Search blog. We have an entire three-part series on how to train your facial landmark detector. Here you can see from this example screencast that it, I've trained the model to just localize the eye regions without you know, having to recognize all the other facial structures. That could be super useful from an efficiency perspective if you don't need the other facial landmarks. But go back here and reread the title of this paper. It's extremely, extremely fast to perform facial landmark detection. In fact, when applying facial landmark detection, the slowest part of the pipeline is the face detector. Once you have the face detected, applying facial landmarks is trivially easy. It's super, super fast. So I get questions from readers emailing in. They're like, hey, how can I, how can I improve the speed of my facial landmark detector? My pipeline is so slow. And my response is always, it's not the facial landmark detector that's the issue. It's your face detector. Go back and look at your face detector. Are there any optimizations that you can apply? Are, are you using a super computationally expensive deep learning-based face detector when a hog or linear SVM detector is going to work just as well and be more efficient? Or in some cases, you know, are you running this deep learning face detector on limited resource hardware like the Raspberry Pi? You know, if that's the case, you might want to try just getting away with a hard cascade. Yes, it's going to be, it's not going to be as accurate, but it's going to be super, super quick. And if you need high accuracy face detectors on embedded devices, then what you should consider doing is using you know, uh, some sort of deep learning model accelerator like the Movidius NCS, Google Coral, et cetera. Like those, you can apply your face detector using those coprocessors, take the face detection results back and then apply facial landmark detection. So again, just keep in mind that facial landmark detection itself, super, super speedy and quick where you're going to spend most of your data intensive um, processing time is performing face detection. So you want to optimize the face detector if you're noticing your pipeline is being super slow. So inside this images directory, I have a few sample images that we're going to apply facial landmark detection to, and you'll be able to see the results of them. So I'm going to open up PyCharm. I have all of this project directory structure loaded in, and let's dig into the code. So our first import is from the IMUtils library, which is my convenience, my set of convenience functions to make working with image processing and OpenCV easier. And inside we have this face utils module. And this is just a set of helper functions. It's going to allow us to convert DLib's returned uh, facial landmarks into a NumPy array. And it's also going to allow us to easily compute the bounding box of a given uh, face detection from DLib's hog and linear SVM model. So these are just convenience functions, and I'm actually going to walk you through them later on in this implementation. I'll show you what they're actually doing inside the IMUtils library. And then next week, we'll look into this function, the visualize facial landmarks. This will really allow you to appreciate extracting each of the individual facial structures on, um, on the image itself. So from there, we have arg parse for command line arguments. Uh, we use imutils here for the resizing function, just a convenience function. Dlib is super important. This is your library that is actually going to perform uh, facial landmark uh, detection and face detection. Um, make sure you have this library installed. It is pip installable. Uh, I've noticed on some embedded devices, you may have to compile it from scratch, you know, but in most cases you shouldn't. It should be a strict pip install. It should be very easy. And here we have CV2 for our OpenCV bindings. Moving on to our command line arguments here. 
we have the shape predictor. This is the path to the facial landmark predictor. It's that this dot DAT model that's been trained by Davis and the DLib library. You know, that nothing is needed here. All you need to do is pass in the path to this file for this command line argument. And then we have image. This is the path to one of the images in our images directory right over here. Next up, we need to initialize a face detector. In order to apply facial landmark detection, you first need to localize the face in the input image. Now we're using DLib's hog-based face detector here just for convenience because it only takes a single line of code to initialize. DLib just loads it for us, and then from there we can perform face detection. Of course, as I said, you can use whatever face detector you want. It could be a Har Cascade, it could be OpenCV's deep learning-based face detector. This is DLib's hog-based face detector, but DLib also ships with a CNN-based face detector. You could use that as well. As long as your face detector produces a bounding box, that's all that matters. So again, just for just for the sake of convenience, we're gonna use DLib's hog face detector. And then from there, we're gonna initialize our predictor. This is the shape predictor responsible for predicting and localizing the facial structures in the image. And here we're supplying the path to our facial landmark detector, the detector residing on disk. Next up, we load our input image from disk. We resize it to have a width of 500 pixels, and then we convert the image to grayscale. This grayscale conversion step is, um, is optional. With hog-based face detectors, you typically see them applied to grayscale images, and they're typically trained on grayscale images. So typically you will want to perform that grayscale conversion process because of the nature of how the hog gradients are computed. If you did it for a three-channel image, you'd actually end up with a three-channel hog image in return, which you may or may not want. And there's also ways that you can kind of take in a color image and then compute the gradients of each channel and then take the maximum value of a given pixel location for that gradient. You know, it, it makes the process more complicated, makes the algorithm slower, and in most cases, it, it doesn't boost face detection accuracy. So because of that, simple grayscale conversion is what you're going to do here. And then you're going to pass that grayscale image into, into the DLib face detector. The result of which is going to be this Rex array. It is an array of objects, of DLib rectangle objects. So for each of these faces, we need to loop over them individually. And then we're gonna take in our grayscale image, and then we're gonna take in the current face detection, the bounding box of the face, and we're gonna call our facial landmark predictor. And this is going to return a shape object. The problem is that this shape object is it's not a NumPy array, and we need to have this as a NumPy array so we can draw on it, so we can work with it. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna call this shape to NumPy function inside the face submodule of imutils. So I have the source code for imutils pulled up here in my browser, and inside you see this shape to numpy function. So it's gonna accept the shape object that came from our facial landmark predictor, and it's going to initialize a set of xy coordinates. And the total number of coordinates is gonna be the length of the shape object. So in this case, it's going to be 68 because there's 68 facial landmarks that we're trying to predict. So it's gonna be a 68 by two array, 68 total points, and then two here, one for the X component, one for the Y component. Now we're gonna loop over each of the number of parts individually, and we're gonna update our coordinates array to be the X, Y coordinates. So it's the current X component in the loop and the current Y component in the root and then we return these x, y coordinates to the calling function. So it's a very, very simple, convenient, easy function to use. Coming back over here to uh, our source code, we're then gonna convert DLib's rectangle to object to an OpenCV style bounding box. And when you think of bounding boxes in OpenCV, you think of them as a four tuple of the x and y coordinate, the top left corner of the bounding box, and then the width and height of the bounding box. In DLib though, their bounding boxes are represented slightly differently. So they're represented as the left, the top, the right, and the bottom coordinate. So what we do is we extract the X, the Y, the width is equal to the right coordinate minus the X, and the height is equal to the bottom coordinate minus the Y. And thus we arrive here at our four tuple of X, Y, width, height. And that's returned to the calling function which is exactly what we're doing right here. 
So now that we have the open CV style bounding box, we call the CV2.rectangle function to draw the bounding box. And then we, just for annotation purposes, which is useful to, to visualize the output, we're gonna draw uh, the face number, which is obtained here from, from this loop. Final step we have to do here is loop over each of the XY coordinates from this shape object. And we're gonna draw each of the facial landmarks on the input image. That way we can verify that we've successfully performed facial landmark detection. And the rest of the code, just gonna show the output image to our screen. So I'm gonna come up here, grab the example usage, paste it over into my terminal and run the script. So here we have our output image. You can see that my face has been successfully detected. And then we've also drawn each of the individual facial landmarks on the image. So we've localized my jawline, my mouth, my nose, each of the eyes, and then each of the eyebrows. Let's try a different image. And again, we've been successful here, performed face detection, and then also localized each of the, the facial structures on the image. And then one final image, this one with, with multiple faces, uh, me and my wife, my wife, Trisha. Here, my face is detected. Here, her face is detected. And we've successfully localized each of the landmarks on the face. So now you have a really good understanding of how to perform facial landmarks with DLib and OpenCV. But what's, what's the point? What's the practical use case of using facial landmarks? Well, consider what I said at the beginning of this tutorial. You may be developing a drowsiness detector for people just driving their cars, you know? The world is so fast paced now, people aren't sleeping properly. And unfortunately, people get into car accidents due to lack of sleep, due to lack of attention. So you can literally have a camera mounted on like the sun visor of your car, and it's just looking at your eyes. It's monitoring your eye regions. And if your eyes are closed for too long, if you're like, you know, eyes are pointed somewhere out one of the corner of the windows, you're not looking straight ahead, you could raise an alarm and alert the driver. And in fact, we're going to build that exact project later in this course. Another great example is virtual makeovers. You know, people want to make sure they're purchasing the correct shade of makeup. And makeup is, it's a big business. It's billions and billions of dollars spent on makeup every year. Uh, it's a flourishing industry. And and it's a challenging industry because typically you need to be in person. You need to see the makeup, you need to see it applied to your face. But by using virtual makeup makeover systems like this, you could actually apply the makeup to the person by detecting their face and then, you know, applying any mascara, or eyeshadow or lipstick. All that is made possible by knowing where the mouth is, knowing where the nose is, where the eyes are, where the eyebrows are, where the forehead is. Facial landmarks help you do that. So that's really the end goal of facial landmarks is they're, they're facilitating downstream operations where you need to extract the facial regions. Another great example is, is a usability use case. So someone who has a disability and they can't use their hands uh, easily enough to operate a computer, you could actually use their eyes to, con to control the computer. So you could have a webcam pointed at someone's face, you localize the eyes, and as they move their eyes, the mouse will move across the screen. And if they blink at a certain pattern, again, monitoring the eyes that could facilitate a one click or two clicks, you know, or, or whatever gesture uh, on your operating system. So there are tons and tons of use cases of facial landmarks, and we're just now scratching the surface. So pay attention to these lessons if you have any interest in face applications at all, because facial landmarks at some point are going to play a really, really important role in your project. I'll see you next week when we dive into extract to extracting each of the individual face locations. See you later.